Hello, and welcome to this presentation on trauma of the posterior segment. By the end of this video, I will expect viewers to be able to contrast the three main types of trauma, to be able to describe the presenting signs and symptoms of three common manifestations of posterior segment trauma, which are vitreous hemorrhage, retinal detachment, and optic nerve injury. I will also expect viewers to be able to discuss the initial management of each of these conditions. First, let's review the anatomy of the posterior segment. The posterior segment represents the structures behind the lens, which begins with the anterior hyaloid face, marked by the curvy green line. And it includes important structures like the vitreous cavity, where there is vitreous humor that provides cushion for the eye. The retinal vessels are shown here. The retina is the peach yellow layer in this diagram that lines the wall of the eye and provides specialized vision cells and photoreceptor cells to process light. And the last structure is the optic nerve and its dural sheath. The optic nerve is the cable of fibers that joins the retina and carries information to the brain for visual processing. There are typically three types of trauma, blunt, penetrating, and perforating. Another type of trauma that is often described but won't be discussed in this video is intraocular foreign bodies. The visual prognosis following trauma is based on the presentation of the patient and whether or not there are other ocular injuries. In blunt trauma, an object does not pierce the eye but may cause a closed globe injury or an open globe rupture of the eyeball, usually at the weakest point of the scleral wall. The forces hitting the eye cause the eye to flatten at the point of contact and misshapens momentarily. This flattening of the eye often stretches or displaces intraocular structures, causing the damages that we see on exam. In penetrating injuries, there is a disruption in the eye wall with an entrance wound, but no exit wound. In perforating injuries, there are two breaks in the eye wall with an entrance wound and an exit wound. Let's dive into the most common clinical manifestation of posterior segment trauma, vitreous hemorrhage. A vitreous hemorrhage is blood that has accumulated in the vitreous humor. Patients who develop a vitreous hemorrhage can have a wide range of symptoms from mildly blurred vision to dark red floaters or black shadows obscuring their vision. On presentation, the examiner might see a total blood-filled vitreous, like the photo on the left, obscuring any details of the retina vessels or optic nerve. The patient may also present with a partial blood-filled vitreous, like in the photograph on the right, where you can see most of the details of the structures. Vitreous hemorrhages occur because the ocular trauma has led to torn or traumatized vessels from the retina, iris, or ciliary body. Vitreous hemorrhage, as in this video, is most often caused by blunt trauma, but can also be caused by penetrating or perforating types of injury to the posterior segment as well. If there is sudden loss of vision, that patient needs an urgent referral to an ophthalmologist. Otherwise, the patient should be seen the same day or within two days, depending on the severity. The ophthalmologist will carefully look for other damage behind the hemorrhage and treat necessary findings. If there is complete obscuration of the posterior segment because of blood, it is okay to ultrasound the eye, but only if the globe is not ruptured. The photo on the right represents a B-scan ultrasound demonstrating a blood-filled vitreous cavity. Surgery may be an option to help clear the blood in the future. Let's move on to our second clinical entity, retinal detachment. The retina, which is a thin layer of neurologic tissue containing photoreceptors and blood vessels, is normally found lining the inner wall of the eye, similar to wallpaper lining a room. The retina can detach from its wall during any type of trauma caused by a retinal tear or hole. Sometimes, but not always, retinal detachment symptoms are preceded by flashes of lights and floaters. Detachments can have associated vitreous hemorrhages that could also be noticed by the patient. Patients can have a range of symptoms that correlate with the area that is detached. They can have central blurring, partial vision loss, or total vision loss. A retinal detachment develops as fluid seeps through the retinal tear opening and gets trapped. On exam, the examiner will see a fluid collection behind the retina that lifts up the retina, and this is the retinal detachment. Retinal detachments should be referred to ophthalmologist that same day. The ophthalmologist will carefully examine for cause of detachment and will pay close attention to the location and size of any retinal tears and holes in the shape of the fluid behind the retina and will determine timing of repair, which can range from that same day to one week, depending on other injuries as well. Finally, let's discuss optic nerve injuries, which can be categorized as direct and indirect injuries to the optic nerve or nerve sheath. We'll talk first about direct injuries. Direct injury is least common, 
but damage can be most devastating and can happen in the setting of head, orbital, or globe trauma. Direct traumatic optic neuropathy can lead to optic nerve avulsion or nerve sheath damage by bony orbital fragments or foreign bodies. Injuries may also produce compressive optic neuropathy secondary to intraorbital or intrasheath hemorrhage, as shown here in the photo on the right, which was caused by an elbow to the eye during a basketball game. As you can see, the patient's presentation can vary, but the result of the direct injury is usually visible, such as nerve head swelling, nerve head bleeding or whitening, and adjacent retinal bleeding. Patients will have blackened vision, probably bare light perception to no light perception, or they will have severe vision loss and inevitably a relative afferent pupillary defect. Now, indirect optic nerve trauma is the most common form and can manifest in different ways. It can occur with minor head injury through indirect transmission of forces through the orbital bones damaging the optic nerve or affecting its vascular supply. The exam may appear normal as shown in the left photo. However, the vision will be affected and there will be a relative afferent pupillary defect. That appearance may change one to two months later and appear more pale due to atrophy and axonal death like the photo on the right. Neuroimaging is needed to delineate the extent of the injury to the optic nerve and nerve sheath, especially when the mechanism of vision loss is not so clear. The left photograph is a CT scan and the arrow points to a bony fragment impinging on the left optic nerve in the optic canal, causing vision loss. In this case, surgery was performed to release the bony fragment and the vision improved. The right photograph is an MRI and the arrow points to an optic nerve sheath hematoma and post-traumatic swelling causing vision loss. Initial management of optic nerve damage includes evaluation for other injuries that may need to be addressed first. This includes ordering neuroimaging. Since these patients often present to the emergency department, consult ophthalmology immediately. Damage to the nerve fibers and axons are usually irreversible. However, there can be partial recovery of vision after time with no treatment. Some therapies have been tried to reduce inflammation and swelling, but these remain controversial. In summary, there are three types of trauma and visual prognosis is based on the patient's presentation and if there are other ocular injuries. In this presentation, we reviewed three common clinical manifestations of posterior segment trauma. All three conditions can be caused by any of the three types of trauma discussed. These three conditions have symptoms that range from mild changes in vision to severe vision loss. Surgical repair is available for vitreous hemorrhage and retinal detachment. Optic nerve injuries often do not have treatment that can improve the vision unless there is orbital fracture bony impingement that can surgically be removed or decompressed. All three entities need immediate attention by an ophthalmologist, especially when there is sudden vision loss. Thank you for your attention.